It's time for Who Watch Time and Relative Blackness in Space. everyone, it's Connie and Robin coming to you live from the Time Vortex. Today we're discussing episode 8 of Doctor Who season 12, The Haunting of Villa Diodati. In this episode, Mary Shelley, THE Mary Shelley, gets some major inspiration to invent a whole new genre. The Doctor does what she wasn't supposed to, and the flat team structure isn't so flat anymore. Yeah, um, thoughts. I... So this was written by Maxine Alderton and directed by Emma Sullivan. And so like, yay, women. Yay, ladies. Yay, mm-hmm. ladies. Time ladies. Like it sh- and, and as it should be for an episode about a famous women, women, w- woman writer. <laughs> woman writer. Mm-hmm. That's the word. Part of me was like, F you, because I have never read Frankenstein because I know me. Yeah, you I sure. was <laughs> not interested in... <laughs> going to like a haunting uh-uh. and um as the sh- the episode went on i was like you know what f y'all why can we go see like charlotte bronte or jane austen right those are some badass ladies yeah doing badass things yeah, they can can come in there. yeah they have men. you know what i mean mm-hmm. um and then in the slack i wasn't able to like really be in the Who Watch channel, because I had I watched it way later. Yeah, the All Star game was also on, so like was y'all were tripping. On. Y'all were tripping. We were, we were, we were watching Twitches. Live, yeah, we were doing a live tweet trip of Twitches, which <laughs> I I quit to was like, you know what? Twitches isn't doing it for me the way that I know the All Star game well. Um, <laughs> Fair. But someone had brought up the point in the Slack that like they wish it wouldn't have got we wouldn't have gone back to like the 1800s like why couldn't we go to the 80s or the 90s or mm. like something like that um and then i started to think about bridget Jones' diary okay which is still not a horror <laughs> no <laughs> like who i am as a person right but um the novel or the book it's a diary but it was a novel. Oh, mm-hmm. It was an epistolatory novel or whatever, because yeah. it's a diary entry. Uh-huh. It was in 1996. <laughs> that is 2006, 2016. <laughs> Math. 24 years ago. It passed. Like, past, past. Yeah. And. <laughs> like, the real past. The real past. It's still, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And, like, we could have. I get, I mean, and I'm, as someone who, like, really does, like, the romance, Regency era stuff, and I, I'm going to stop saying that I really like Regency era. I like Jane Austen. You like and Jane Austen. And Jane yeah. Eyre. Yeah. You like the Jane. I don't even like a lot of the other Bronte stuff, because Wuthering Heights can suck it. But <laughs> I like, I like those things. So I, I do think that, like, if I was on the TARDIS with the Doctor, I would be like, yeah, let's go. Let's go see Mr. Darcy. Right. But I also think that because this is a television show, it would have been cool to go to a different time. Like We're always in the, the 1800s, like always. Yeah, I think the earliest historical that we've done is Agatha Christie. Hmm? And that was in the 20s. You mean like latest? Latest. Yeah. Historical. Yeah. So I was like, they've been yeah. to the beginning of the creation of the earth. Right. <laughs> No, but I mean to like take, yeah, yeah, like yeah. meet a historical figure. I yeah, think yeah, yeah. like Agatha Christie. I mean, World War the World War Two and the fifties. That fifties episode with Rose and the TVs. I think it was the TVs. Yeah, but we didn't meet like a historical figure. Sure, right. Mm-hmm. You know, so World War Two, so, nor and them. Yeah, that counts. I'm sure there's some that other World count. War Two Hitler. <laughs> I was like, there's someone I'm missing. <laughs> yeah, we've 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 been been done Hitler. We killed Hitler. Um, yeah. 
a couple yeah, times. But anytime we've been after World War II, it is rarely like a well known historical character. Yeah, like even and it's like also Stephen not Hawkins. often. Like the amount of times we've been to the eighteen hundreds versus been to anywhere after the nineteen fifties yeah. is like <laughs> outweigh outweighed. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like even you know what would be great? Now that I'm thinking about it, we should move on because I could. This could just turn into who watch all the places we should go. Yes, um, like Doctor, the, Dr. Seuss. Yeah, like the late seventies, early eighties punk scene, mm. like the Clash, and the, Sex Pistols, and the, really just the fits. Going to see Vivian Westwood here for the fits, like, man. The fits, but also like those people, right? That'd be cool. You know what I mean, like Sid and Nancy. That would be fun. I wonder w- if there's a reason they haven't got. Well, I guess they haven't gone like, past. Because a lot of those people still are full. Yeah, and I think they haven't gone past like the creation of the show. Oh. Hmm. Huh. I and you know we could be wrong. There's a steel trap listening who will be able to tell us yeah. <laughs> what we've missed. But unless it's like set in the present, because it was like written and produced in, in, those, that in that yeah. time um i'm having a hard time remembering and it, if if it has happened it still is not a lot um yeah for considering sure. how often we've gone to the 1800s we could have gone to the 80s just as much or the 70s or whatever um so yeah i did um, read frankenstein in college I feel like I liked it more than I expected to. Did I finish it? I don't remember. <laughs> Did I finish any books that I had to read for school? Hmm, doubtful. Um, but, yeah. I finished Harry Potter, like, quickly. Yeah, like, I read those, but no one assigned them to me. I, ooh, oh, no, I, was assigned, me. I was assigned Harry Potter. If they had like, assigned me Harry Potter, oh, man, it would have been over. My I already good a, English grade would have been surplus. Yeah. I took a bestsellers in America class from like night, like after nineteen twenty or something like that. It was literally a syllabus of bangers. Like I was like <laughs> the old, like the reason why I took the class. It was like yeah. Harry Potter, Nancy Drew, Ooh. the Hardy Boys. Mm. I got to read Peyton Place and The Godfather. Oh. I read all of those books. I've never been in an English class in which I like. <laughs> was like on it. I That's was like, this how, is my shit. For this class that I read Frankenstein for, I felt, I didn't feel quite that way, but it was supposed to be that way because it was a monsters and popular culture class. And I did get to mm-hmm. write my like final presentation about Angel, the series. So like vampires on Angel. <laughs> um, <laughs> but we read Frankenstein and Dracula, Jekyll and Hyde. See, like no. all of those. Um, I want to say... Invasion of the Body Snatchers? Oh, hell no. <laughs> I don't think, I don't really like that one. I don't really mess with aliens outside of Doctor Who that much. Um, but yeah, uh, it, so that was what the class was. And, you know, we kind of, I don't remember what we talked about. It was a long time ago. Now. Wow, it was 10 years ago. That's crazy. Um, but I do remember liking Frankenstein more than I thought I would. Um, but yeah, it's just interesting. I, the Cyberman makes sense for... Um, how they yeah put it all together in terms of how it inspired her also without like overly being like and now I'm writing Frankenstein (laughs) like they didn't really like put the nail on the head at the end which was good they like kind of focused on Percy and his writing and stuff um I think overall it was really yeah the spooky wasn't for me um but I will say that I did like like this element of spooky, if if it was also not like as visually spooky, mm. but like I do like the idea of going somewhere and coming in a circle, like they then not mm-hmm. being able to like get to the top floor yeah. or like um, I almost called him Bradley. His, name, his mom named Bradley. I'm calling Bradley. Uh, Graham <laughs> being like I'm going around in circles here, like not being able to like find their way, but not realizing it until you've already gone. Like I like yeah. that. Mm-hmm. That's about as. This episode was way spookier than even Thrilling. reading Frankenstein was for me in college. I was just like, oh, it's just some letters. And, like, Frankenstein's monster's, like, creepy. But it's not, like, I don't remember it being spooky. But I also could just be blocking out. And also, just, like, the way it's written is just, like, this is what happened today. And the monster has feelings. <laughs> um, 
So, you know, I think it was a cool way to tie in the Cybermen story and also Frankenstein's story. Um, but I, <laughs> it's just too many characters again. I was just like, I am confusing yeah. all these pale white people and I'm supposed to know who they are. <laughs> we did not need um, the cousin, Claire Claremont. Like, I get it. I mean, it. all we, of those people were in. Right, they were together, like, that, literally. They were there. But that they, was the point. they made up a whole baby. Like, William does not. William does not exist at the time that they put this William baby in yeah. it. She had had a kid at the time, but it was a it was a girl. It, it, the the died, William right? came later. I think all of them except for the, her last one. She had like four kids, yeah. and because it's the 1800s, only one of them maybe survived till adulthood. So William wasn't even one of the ones that survived. So I was just like, y'all made up a whole baby. So why don't y'all just cut some of these characters out? Yeah, like the nurse. Dr. Polidori, the Fletch, Fletchling, Fletcher. Dr. Polidori was there. He's like a real person. <gasps> no, I know. I'm just saying like they. But yeah, we could have. They still could have switched some stuff around since they switched yeah. it around anyway. Be like, oh, well, that's weird that he's not here. He's supposed to be here on this epic night when she comes up with this story. Um, but I was just getting them all confused. I was just like, is that Claire or is that Mary? I don't, I don't know. But I was also tired also when I watched it. Yeah, <laughs> to be honest, we also didn't. I don't think we spent that much like quality time with Mary. Right, because there are like, so many other people. Yeah, and I do think I just like there's a Twitter thread out there, and then I have to find it again. But someone goes uh, like through Lord Byron's like life and like Ooh. the man was wildin'. Wild. <laughs> so I was excited that we got to like. No one snogged Brad Byron. <laughs> no one snogged Lord Byron. Um, I was excited that he was like a main character. Yeah. And all of the like scenes with him I thought were great. Yeah. Like I like. 13 was gonna murder him. <laughs> 13 was like literally, he was giving her eyes and she was like, if you do not <laughs> stop it. Uh. Nope. In front of um, one of your other women, like, come on, bro. <laughs> That's just and how we flirted with her by telling her that the other girl couldn't keep her hands off. Like, <laughs> this Messe, is like the height of like your like, idea of romance. <laughs> yes, like restraint and, and hands almost and touching quiet looks. Um, yeah, and he ankles like, showing. Girl had to have it, so Is-O-Man. you know I had to give it to her. Shocking. The yeah, no, Byron was great to have. It's and I so I get it. There are so many people that were literally key to this like epic night, but they changed so much anyway. They could have cut one or two. Like Claire could have been off in yeah. another room. The doctor Polidori, we didn't really need him. They could have done something to excise some of it. But I did appreciate that despite having so many characters, we actually got like fam stuff and I'm just like this is what I wanted all along they didn't have like major development or storylines but we got some lines that are about their personal lives and I was just like this is all I needed (laughs) and you've been denying me all that season (laughs) with the and that's the thing is like with the fam and like with the companions not every episode needs to be like a major storyline for them we need moments where we actually get to know who they are like one of my favorite Donna episodes is Turn Left, which I know a lot of people don't. And it's a major storyline surrounding her and her choices. Yeah. But, like, a lot of... But that also comes later in the season and a mm-hmm. lot of the earlier stuff. Like, yeah. Fires of Pompeii is not about Donna, but uh-huh. we get a sense of what Donna is about, yep. like, very quickly through these, like, smaller mm-hmm. moments. And, like, she reveals um, things about herself that we didn't know before. Yeah. In in like, small moments. Yes. And like that we got that was Yaz this week and I was like We out here. Ah, we out here. We we'll, out get, here. we'll get to it. We'll get I to like, it. Pause it. I was like, I'm not even done, but let me go into the slap real quick because <laughs> what? Is this same, happening? Same. I was just like, I, did they did did they really I think this ooh, is happening, ooh, guys? It must be ha- it's gotta be happening. We'll it's talk gotta about be it. happening. We'll, we'll talk about it later. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> I'm here for it. We'll get to it. We'll get to it. Um, (laughs) But a fun fact that I did not remember, um, but should have, Lord Byron is Ada Lovelace's dad. So, you know, that ties into Spyfall um, because Lord Byron was out here. Man, Lord Byron was a rolling stone. I forgot about that. 
I also loved, um, I remembered that because, because of, I think because of this thread, this thread like happened relatively recently. I can like try to find it. Um, I did remember that. I loved, I love these moments in which like I, I, in which the doctor breaks her own rules. Mm, mm -hmm. Um, but in a way in which he's not like, sometimes the doctor breaks their rules purposefully. Like what what happens is like the climax of this episode, and they're like, okay, the only way to fix problem A is to start problem B, and like I know it's against the rules, but this is you where know, we at. <laughs> this is where we at. Um, this time it just felt like she got excited and forgot. <laughs> <laughs> like she was like, oh yeah, me and Ada were talking about that thing, and he was like, who? She's a, How do you you talking to a baby? <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Because, like, at this point where they are, Ada is, like, seven, maybe. She's, like, a child. Yeah. Um, and it's funny because she mentions, 13 mentions to Ada that she's, like, hung out with her dad. So I don't know if that's from, like, a previous story or just, like, a noodle incident that they threw in and then yeah. came back to it later because 13 wouldn't know about it now. <laughs> Yeah, you know, so I wonder, or you know, she could meet up with him later in his life, or whatever. So, um, and that happens all the time. So I just wonder which it is. Um, yeah, I wonder. It's like a different. But also, stop reason. telling them. Yeah, but yeah, but like, stop it. <laughs> oh, I knew your father. How, Girl, Sam? Don't. How, girls? What? You're not supposed to be talking about this stuff. <laughs> talking about this stuff. <laughs> um, every time. They mentioned like, oh yeah, I married the queen. I saw the queen. Like, that's another example of the doctor breaking their own rules. <laughs> <laughs> don't talk about Frank. Don't mention Frankenstein. Don't snog Lord Byron. That later part was never gonna happen. But <laughs> yeah, the first part, she was just like, you wanna maybe write a spooky story for me? Things? No, not at all. Dang it. Um. um Something. I mean, she wanted to get them back on track. They were, they were She was trying. She was like, they dancing, and I don't have time for this. This is not what is supposed to be going on. Fun, right and, now. fun and games? No. We Spooky. have an hour. <laughs> Spooky madness. It is a dark and stormy night. Where is the dark and the stormy? Um, you just add a little ginger beer to some rum. Mm hmm. And maybe a sprig of like mint. Gotcha. My fave drink. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, 13's outfit. I, I need to talk yeah. about it. Because I'm... Well, first of all, I was very... I was actually glad that this raincoat that she has is actually... Was actually used practical. as a raincoat. <laughs> huh? With that, it was a practical? <laughs> yeah, like they actually uh, used it well. as what it is. Um, but what was going on under the raincoat? <laughs> I gotta be perfectly honest with you, Connie. I did not notice until you wrote it down. And then <laughs> when I went back right before we started recording, I did notice, and it's a little weird. Mm -hmm. But like, I still wouldn't have. I don't. Interesting. I, I don't usually pay attention don't... to the outfits. Like, like I, I like it when either. we when they get the when they get the outfit. Yeah. I notice it when yeah. the fit changes. I'll notice it. Yeah. But like I always like I was shocked that she wasn't wearing the rainbow t shirt. Has she not been wearing the rainbow t shirt every episode? She has, except for Spyfall where she was wearing the suit version. Yeah, of when her she outfit. they change into the suit. Yeah, so I think this she's was been like wearing one time that yeah. she changed her clothes. Yeah, and so that's what was what stood out to me. So it wasn't because it wasn't like in Spyfall, but it wasn't a rope like it wasn't a wardrobe change. Right, it wasn't a wardrobe change. And so in Spyfall, her outfit, like the tuxedo matched her outfit. And so I really liked that idea. And I was just like, oh, they could just keep doing that. And I would be satisfied. But this week it was sort of like, well, she has her coat. But then we're just going to put a random like studded vest underneath, <laughs> which doesn't match her, her regular outfit, but also is only like half the era. <laughs> it's just like they didn't really go... She was just like, well, it's raining, so let me put my raincoat on, but then never took the coat off for it to, like, have the effect of, like, having a costume change, I think. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't know. I was just, like, bothered by it. It was very clashy. It was so clashy. Yeah. It was, like, the most I've been bothered by the doctor wearing anything maybe ever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, 
I would like to have more to say on the subject, but honestly, you <laughs> missed me completely. Yeah, I usually don't. Girl over here. Yeah, usually um, I don't notice that kind of thing that intensely, but it really bothered me this week. <laughs> um, so basically, in this story, Percy Shelley goes missing during their little party. The house gets real spooky and haunted. Nobody can really go anywhere. They're going in circles. Um, perception filter shenanigans. Um, and then the lone Cyberman shows up, which is the dude from Jack's Warning from a couple episodes ago. Um, the Cybermen are back, and I'm, I guess, if we must. <laughs> you guess. If we must. Fine. Um, I... I didn't hate them, hate it this week. I usually really just like Cybermen storylines, especially after... Well, Bill's the last one, but I usually yeah. just have disliked them in general. And then after Bill, I was just like, y'all can choke. <laughs> yeah, F a Cyberman. I, like, recently was watching Star Trek and discovered, and I'm ashamed of, of this discovery. So I just need everyone who watches Star Trek to know that I'm ashamed that it took me this long. And it is definitely a me problem. Mm. How much the Cybermen are the Borg. Ah. And I feel like this is like, and when I, when I, when my brain went, oh my God, the Cybermen are the Borg. And I typed it in. There was so much stuff <laughs> about the Cybermen being the Borg. Like I'm going to upgrade you. Which you will be, first. you will be assimilated. The Cybermen, I'm sure. Mm-hmm. I'm, I mean, I'm sure. <laughs> I don't know. But, <laughs> um, so this episode, this Cyberman, he, he's like half, it's like armor's like hot, like mm-hmm. dead, like just incomplete. Yeah, I couldn't but it tell if it was look, like it not... looked like it was falling apart. Yeah, it was like I couldn't tell if it was like not finished, like not finished or breaking down, or being destroyed. Yeah. yeah, so I think it feels very the way it was broken felt like destroyed. Like I don't know in Star Wars, I think the last one. Um, Someone, I don't remember who right now, um, like smashed a stormtrooper's like helmet and it felt like someone had, like he'd been attacked in that way. That's what it yeah. felt like to me versus like they just never finished, which is what 13 was operating from. Yeah. Um, but it reminded me a lot of, he, his look reminded me a lot of Jean-Luc um, as a uh, Borg and also Seven of Nine when they were kind of, breaking down her Borg parts into making her, come, like, re-assimilating her back into humanity. Mm. I don't know the right word for that. Um, but... You will be reassimilated. Yeah, but look, but, like, it was giving me, like, Locutus of Borg slash Seven of Nine, like, vibes. And I, then I was, like, I really thought we were going to go there, which is, like, in both of those stories um basically they they gain they regain their humanity mm, but then we mm-hmm. didn't go there so there like, was like five seconds like, where it was gonna happen and yeah. i was just like oh oh no <laughs> nope very much no <laughs> yeah. he has a heart oh he really doesn't he really I does slit not. my own children's throats <laughs> <laughs> it's like oh jeez god right um but yeah, I, I have a, yeah, I, I'm with you on the Cyberman thing. I have very much like a no, thank you. <laughs> they can all choke. I'm done with these storylines. Mostly because of Bill, but also like we talked about like the Bill and Danny back to back. Yeah. Um, I'm just like, ugh, no. And also very much was like, <laughs> was like don't get near Ryan. <laughs> don't touch him, don't look at him. Think about it. Um, but yep. I also think that, like, Cyberman is the only alien monster of the week type of thing that could do. Oh, yes. This. Yeah. And I'm interested in how it's going to go. Yeah. Mm hmm. So, yeah, I don't like. Hate, hate it so far because it's not yeah. the same you will be upgraded storyline, I think. Um, so I appreciate the new way in which they're exploring what Cybermen can be um, after so many kind of similar enough storylines. Um, and it may become that, but 
in this particular episode, it was perfect for the per, the historical character of choice and mm-hmm. you know big cliffhanger like she's yeah. really 13 really screwed up with, with no choice but not to um no choice but to but um yeah i'm i'm interested mostly because it's just like we're finally getting to the meat of like all these like half hints that they've been giving of like the lonely the lone cyberman and the timeless child and how the, all that interacts so should yeah. be interesting. I think this we have side what, two more as next week the first part one. Yeah, yeah part yeah. one of the two part finale. Um, Ascension, Ascension. I'm checking where I wrote it. Ascension of the Cybermen is the title. So we're really going there. Yeah. Um, I think the Siberium might be new. I forgot to look it up, um, but it felt new because the Doctor didn't know anything about it. Yeah, I think it is, um, hold on one second, it is, it is a song by Rachel. Right, I was just like, nope, this is not Siberian (laughs) Doctor Who. (laughs) You gotta be specific with your search terms these days. Yeah. Yeah, it feels like. It feels new, though. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'm seeing. um, It's all about the Lone Cyberman. It's all about the Lone Cyberman, so. So that's cool. A liquid metal with the collective knowledge of the Cybermen. And it was like destroying Percy Shelley's brain. But the doctor could take it. And so she absorbed it for a hot second. And I'm like, does that not do nothing to her? Like, not not that it would, like, have the same effect as Byron, but but rather just some other effect of having this clearly toxic (laughs) AI database in your brain. Um... Also, another Star Trek thing. And I'm, mm. like, upset because I don't know. <laughs> because I'm new to both. I don't know where they align. Because they're both right. long-ass running shows. But. Yeah. Um, From almost the same, very same era. Yeah. yeah. Um, but in Star Trek Section 41. Um, in the last season of discovery spoiler heavy whatever section mm-hmm. 31 is like basically like the federation's like nsa or something or cia mm-hmm. um and they have a an ai that like becomes not sentient but sentient and they have to like shut it down and I'm very interested in like how these things like the similarities and the differences because they're so, like mm-hmm. there's such similar concepts right and they're and they're like two of the biggest <laughs> science fiction franchises right and there's that, a ton of overlap between yeah, the like, fans you... and the creators, and yeah. I'm sure that one watches the other. And so I'm like, I'm sure that it's going to be different. Right. Um, but, like, I'm, I'm excited because I'm like, this is like a big plot line in Discovery <laughs> last season. Yeah, and that's, oh, yeah. This is not like older Star Trek. This is like the new one. <laughs> no, this is new Star Trek. <laughs> well, then. Yeah. Um, and yeah, speaking of Bill and Danny, but we don't really talk about Danny. Um, no. It seemed like 13 was actually directly referencing Bill um, for the first time, which, again, we Del- Deli and I mentioned that last week. And then they, like, did it. And I'm just like, I'm glad that they're, like, listening to our podcast from the, f- from the past or whatever, but, like, see these things earlier. <laughs> I'm still just like, y'all doing the things, but so late in the game. Yeah, and I think that that's the thing is, like, it, it's nice that they are, like, that these things are happening, but it doesn't, but then the, our critiques are still valid because yes. it still has taken too long. Yeah. And it's, like, it's too far to give it the growth that it deserves or needs. Yep. So it's like, yeah, I'm glad that, like, 
we're finally seeing this, but also like what took you so damn long. Yep. And we have two episodes left, so I'm scared that like the two part finale is going to be so full of stuff. It will be. Mm-hmm. It will be awful. Right. And hard to follow. Yeah. Or because that. also so all the things that they've left till the last minute has to get packed in, and then they can't develop any of it. And it has to get packed it into like twenty minutes because I need at least twenty five good minutes of the master. <laughs> like, I expect a master cliffhanger next week. Like, if we don't get I a master mean, cliffhanger and he's in the whole finale, like finale finale, I am just. I think then we also have to like. There are so many reasons to roll up on Chibs, and you know he didn't kill the new black lady. He made her the doctor. So I'm just like, all right, you get a breathing moment here, but. If the whole episode is just Sasha just gallivanting around, what are we here for? I'm going to be here for a refund, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I'm going to need to speak to the manager. I was told by Apple Care <laughs> That we like, can get some prime Sasha Dewan. I need it, precious. Did I do that right? <laughs> Is that correct? I can't even. Um, I've spent a lot of time and emotion and like thirst on like 40 minutes of television. Yeah. And I need my payoff. I need yeah. Um, I need, and I also need like a good Yaz versus Master versus that like thirteen. mm, That would be delicious. Like what I want, honest. This is gonna sound awful, but we've already decided they're listening to us and have access to a TARDIS so they can go back and fix it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I need a scene where Yaz is in the middle. She's looking scared. And the master is reaching out a hand on one side saying, Ooh. come with me. And the doctor's reaching out a hand on the other side saying, come with me. Mm. And they're both looking fine. And she's like, oh. <laughs> what do I do? What do I do? Except we already know and what she, she goes does. with the doctor, yeah. obviously. Because she wasn't the master checking. is a mass murder. I mean, it's the master, person, but also, wasn't... like, she wasn't checking for him when he was a soft boy. So, you know. Right. She wasn't checking for him. But... He's going to have that, like, steely look on his face, yeah, and he's yeah. going to be staring at her intensely, and his hand's going to be reaching out, and I'm going to be like, take his hand, but don't. <laughs> Woo! I got excited. <laughs> I do want that. I would love that. That would be so yeah. great. And then Ruth, like, blows everything up. She just comes out and of nowhere with her big gun. And like, really? Yeah, so you're going to go with El Crazy over here, and Miss Lady, who's all stripes and pants and don't reach. And then you have this, like, you right, and then goes with Ruth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I'm also the doctor, so, like, whatever you yeah. like about her, you can like about me, too. You got like about me. Mm-hmm. Exactly. <laughs> Cybermen. <laughs> Before we get to next week's episode, because um, we're clearly already there, um, random fact that I learned on TV Tropes, Ashad is the first Cyberman to use an individual name in TV canon since their first appearance in The Tenth Planet in Classic Who. Um, also, I couldn't help but think of DJ Khaled. Someone <laughs> said that, and I was like, oh, not watching it yet. Shot. And I was like, what is happening in Talking to you? <laughs> couldn't help this it. This is the talking point. I couldn't help it. <laughs> couldn't but also, help it. I mean, you know, it was right there. It was right there. They laid it down. Um, so this what week... What were you were supposed to do? What was I supposed to do? Uh, this week, we get to talk about 13. Like, 13, Jodie Whittaker is just out here. Like, she really acting. is just acting. Like, really just bringing it. Um, and just people who don't like her, just cause, like, just because she's a Are girl. Wrong. Like, yeah, like, I just, it's stupid, because she's, like, bringing it. And, like, I feel like there are critiques to be made about Various. I mean, we've spent many episodes talking about them, but Jody is not a not any of the problems. I just no. She she just gave her best time, Lord Victorious, and I was here. Ooh. I was here for it, laying Did down the law not? and the rules. 
We finally like she get said, to see some depth and some like the you know Hufflepuff ba- Hufflepuff Badger thirteen is great. I love that obviously because me. Mm-hmm. Um, but like the depth that you get to see this week, I was like, this is also what I've been waiting for <laughs> for them to like actually address this elephant that's in the room. Yeah, and I think too like we have been talking a lot about like the changes in thirteen. Mm-hmm. Um, she's a bit. Crueler. Mm-hmm. Um, and cruel is not it. Hard She's edged. a bit harder. Yeah, harder. Yeah, mm-hmm. hard edge. She's a bit more like. I, I'm not even going to say distant because she's not. Mm-hmm. Um, compartmentalized. Yes. Maybe is a better yeah. word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and it. then this episode really like. She like draw the line in the sand Mm -hmm. and it very much is time lord victorious but it's also um because y'all are 10 and i'm 11 i don't care i'm 11 oh hey hey, little girl um (laughs) when um what is the name of that now i'm missing it it's amy's first episode with the starwell oh -hmm. and he's like i have to do it because (laughs) y'all suck (laughs) And yes. I don't want to do it, says but exactly I'm left that. with no good choices. Yeah, he says exactly that. Because mm-hmm. y'all suck. <laughs> That's what he said. He was like, humans stay giving me crappy choices. Like, mm-hmm. yes. What else am I supposed to do? Um, and I do think that, like, we, we talked about this. I mean... Showrunners, as, like valid critiques of showrunners aside, the casting director for who, and the showrunners too, they know how to cast a goddamn doctor. Yeah, I did not like the vast majority of Capaldi's run. I'm still upset because of a lot of the storylines that happened during Capaldi's run. Yeah. But one of my main like gripes about it is that they wasted. Capaldi because there were moments at, at, there were moments after moment after moment in which I was like yeah he's the doctor yeah, he's sure. just doing dumb shit <laughs> he's just in these stupid he's you know these what stupid I mean? stories he's, he's these stupid stories but like he was definitely like on point and I wanted him I wanted to see him shine in like something good yeah um and like so I haven't seen there hasn't been in New Who a doctor I do not like right like an actor or i guess an actor who i was like doesn't do it for me mm-hmm. doesn't get the doctor thing the um tenant special where there's two doctors and it's like david morrissey or, uh, morrissey or whatever the next doctor yeah i hate that yeah <laughs> i hate that guy as the doctor i'm like he's not the doctor you don't give me doctor vibes i don't buy it in the slightest right there, there's no reason for you to even think that it's the doctor think that he was yeah much less i know it's not like in the end like that's the point is that he's not but there's no reason for the doctor to be like maybe <laughs> maybe yeah the war oh doctor God, I... was the doctor like he came out of nowhere and was a whole different characterization i was still like that's the doctor that's the doctor i buy it yeah, yeah it's like, it's a... they're really good at that mm-hmm. ruth freaking um, ruth like ruth the doctor yeah you right <laughs> Immediately, immediately, you right. You know what you're talking about. The she didn't even have a screwdriver. Does she have a screwdriver? She's like, I don't she do doesn't that. Do screwdrivers? I don't do she's that. Like that's that's what you're working okay. with. Yikes. Okay, girl. If it makes you happy, fine. Um, yeah, but I think that like th- there have been so many moments in which Jodie Whittaker has proven over like she can play this role. Mm -hmm. She can play the hell out of this role. Mm -hmm. And you can quibble with what they have her doing. You can quibble with... I mean... Because I think it could be stronger. Quibble with the... Yeah, you can't quibble with the representation because it's, like, stupid. I mean, you can, but I'm going to tell you to shut up. Yeah. Um, But you can't say... Like, if you're saying that she is not good in this role, you are saying, I'm a bigot. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, like, just sex just, is trash, and yeah, to be just use away. just use less words to say that you <laughs> just use less words to say you're a bigot. It's cool. 
Just tell fine. us you hate women and get it over with. Cause... Get it over with. Cause... And, like, do you see Jodie? Like, she it. put her hands through her hair, and I was just like, wow. She did that as the doctor. Okay. <laughs> that, like, frustrated, I don't know why I like y'all. I don't know why I spend so much time with y'all. I tricked myself. I played myself again. I thought you weren't trash. The look she gave Ryan. Yeah. Just like under her she, lids, like. She was like, did this mom, did she, see, every time I think. That they get it. Y'all done, that they get it, that they, y'all done done something. They don't get Two it. Two seconds ago, you were making me all proud with your anti-gun stance. And then here you are, like. Kill the poet, bruh. Bruh. I need you to not. Who said that you could make that decision? <laughs> Man, I when we get to a quote from the Dardis, but y'all know the line. I was just like, wow, the right writing. I had to pause. I paused it in the middle of the speech because I was like, <laughs> bars, 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 bars. <laughs> I literally had to pause it like two times in the middle of her giving the speech because I was like, it can't. That's it. It can't be more. It's more. <laughs> she got it. Wow. <laughs> Um, she doing that thing. She doing that doctored speech thing, but like the angry kind and not the yep. humans are so great kind <laughs> or definitely not the save the planet kind. Yeah. Um, but the reason she says this is because Ryan's like, why don't we just murk this dude? <laughs> let him go. Sacrifice him. <laughs> like, I don't understand. We, we could just let him die. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Ryan, come on. I mean, He's not wrong. I don't want to say it, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> yeah, it was like, I mean, I, I guess I'm going to be the one to step up. I'm going to be the one. We all thinking it, though, right? Like, mm, uh-huh. he can go. <laughs> Which is the trolley problem on acid. <laughs> because it's like the trolley power problem. It's just like, let this one guy die because a bunch of people will die if we don't kill him. Um, because, you know, everything goes back to the good place in 2020 for me. But... It's time travel. So it's like, but this one dude who was super famous affects like the splinter of like everyone who ever read his work or like comes after him. And it's just like, oh, no, <laughs> which is like a classic Doctor Who problem, obviously. I'm going to be real honest. And I was like low key agreeing with Ryan. I'm not <laughs> agreeing with Ryan because I don't. I fundamentally don't believe in that. Like. <laughs> idea of like anyone can be sacrificed but i was like i mean i know who mary shelley is i didn't really know that her husband wrote anything <laughs> Whoops. so i don't know who he inspired like that but <laughs> yeah i was a little bit like i get the point and you're not how, wrong how, but right. like would ryan who not is? exist ryan might still exist <laughs> Yeah, Ryan would be good. Graham Ryan might not. Maybe Gucci. Graham wouldn't exist. But like Ryan, you'd probably be fine. <laughs> so yeah. yeah. Um, but you know, I'm kidding. Don't sacrifice people. Okay. Captain America said we don't do that. Um, That's right. He said we don't trade lives here. We don't trade lives. Um. Yeah. So. They, um, uh, yeah. They the, the trolley problem don't work in this case because both sides are billions of people. But even despite like this tension with thirteen, they still are just like, yeah, we'll come with you at the end. And I was just like, I mean, I appreciate it, but we ain't gonna interrogate that she just like reprimanded y'all in front of. And she just 18. demoted you. Demoted. Y'all all got y'all all got demoted. Dang, they all got demoted. Me and Dahlia last week were talking about how, like, there are kind of seeds of some of the fam probably leaving the TARDIS. Um, yeah. Hopefully not Yaz, probably Ryan. Probably Ryan. Ryan. Um, I'm, I'm not okay. I know. But it's interesting I mean, I'm that okay. this is a thing that I think would I would a love to see that. Tosin. Oh, sorry. No, it's fine. Um, I was just saying, I'm, mm-hmm. I'm only okay because I would love to see Tosin doing other things, but I also think he could multitask, dude. You could do other things and be on TARDIS. He could just multitask. He's, he's, um, he's got it. He right. was at Galley this weekend. We were not, but our friends were, and he yeah. sounds delightful. He deserves whatever he wants. And apparently him and Ty Gooden go together now. <laughs> Just to completely embarrass her yeah. on this podcast, Absolutely. but also because, like, that picture of them was 
was stupid. Great. It was great. <laughs> I was like, I'm offended on my own behalf. <laughs> Both of y'all ain't got to come at me like this. You know? Um, you know, our friends just doing great things at Galley, hosting <laughs> panels and like talking to doctors and companions. You know, it's chill. Whatever. And also some of them just being literally coothless. <laughs> that's fine as well. Also in as well. You know who you are. You know who you are. Y'all probably know Miss, who we talk about. But who we talk about. Blast. Um, At Black Tardis. Anyway. <laughs> anyway, uh, go check the galley one hashtag for our friends. Um, yeah. Because we were not there. Uh, anyway. <laughs> Anyway, so can, uh, do we, okay, Graham is seeing actual ghosts. Did he feel like he was like losing a step? And I don't know if this was on purpose or not, but I was like, did Graham got dementia? Like, <laughs> like what's going on? No. Like, the way he said he had to go like, to the bathroom, like the way he was kind of bumbling around. He's just like eating snacks. He got, I think he's gonna be like, it's time for me to go lay down. <laughs> Yeah, like, but this has been fun. Did that seem like a choice? Like a it's yeah yeah. I I can't tell what it is because it's been. I guess it has been increasingly like he's just not. He doesn't know how to do anything, like nothing. Like he doesn't. He doesn't contribute anything but jokes, and like maybe, like maybe grandfatherly wisdom, but not really. Yeah, I was like, (laughs) like who are you seeing, bro? Like, because the yeah, show, the doctor like, who has done on? that before, like, this idea of, like, the doctor can solve anything, like, can answer any, like, mysterious question with science, but then there's always just, like, a, but what if it's not? <laughs> but, like, what, it was, like, a, that was a lot. It was, like, a lot to see the, those two, and then they, they had nothing to do with the rest of the story. It's not even, like, they're people Graham knew, yeah. Or to like tie into some other storyline or something. And I was just like, okay. And then just the way <laughs> he it, acted okay. it too, he he acted it like he wasn't okay. Like <laughs> like he was like oh, I feel man. like if Yaz had seen some people that she wasn't supposed to see or that no one had mentioned again, like she would be like, oh like even when we did the Whatever, and she got on that platform and transported herself like a right. dummy. Mm-hmm. Um, she was very much in control. Yeah. You know? And, like, Graham just seeing folk, and I still don't know if those people were real or not, but he was very much not in control. Yeah. Like, he got but they shaken. And I'm just... It gave him food, though. So he was just like, well, I guess this is where I am now. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. guess we're doing Snaps. this. He's a hu- is he a Hufflepuff? Oh, uh, unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> he might be our um, bumbling professor. <laughs> yeah. Head of Hufflepuff House. Um, now it's time to talk about Yaz. <laughs> yes! Are they doing this? I feel like they're doing I this. I feel like they're doing Give it, it to but me. like... Episode Give it to eight. Me faster. Episode eight. Yeah. We could have seeded this way long ago. Season Without... one. Episode one. <laughs> yes, absolutely. But even just this season, it could have been three or four. Episode five. Yeah, it could have been part two of Spyfall. Yes. When the master, or part one, when the master was trying to holla. He, was. he really was. And Yaz said. Sorry, man. I have a my interests lie else. elsewhere, or, and then a lingering look at the doctor. But not even the lingering look. It could just be like my feelings are elsewhere, and then cut it. And then now this week it would just be like, oh, well, I'm clearly like in love with this person, like you are. And then they could have like the, there's a way to slow build it without it being like one moment, and then next week a thing, <laughs> which might be what happens. We don't know yet, obviously, but. Yeah, there it's are looking just ways, like that's what's happening. Yeah, like there's just no time for it to be anything other than like, boom, we're doing this. Um, and obviously there's other seasons. And if Yaz is staying, which I think she might and hope she does, um, there's more time to develop it afterwards. But you still there still could have been like little seeds that weren't like the fandom just grasping at gifts. <laughs> Yeah. Of them like looking at each other because that's not that's not a thing. That's not you making a conscious choice to put yeah. it in the show. That's 
actors look at each other sometimes. <laughs> and like fandom is built on that a lot of times. But, you know, we do that with any two characters. <laughs> yeah, but, but then that, that is fandom and that's choice. not like canon, yeah, and well for thought you to out. Make a purposeful, purposeful choice. You could just yeah. see it earlier, see her talking to her sister. Or, like, the stuff with, you know, her sister and her, you know, depression and stuff. Like, the why are the kids teasing you at school? Like, what is it about that that makes you so whatever? And just, like, hint at it just a little bit stronger. Um, but they might be doing I do, it. I do also want to just fundamentally, like, say again, state for the record, because I don't want, like, the next season for y'all to be like, you're so hypocritical. Fundamentally, I dislike when companions or anyone has a crush on the doctor because mm. I just don't think that's cool. <laughs> like the age difference alone. <laughs> um, the I do believe in like a once you're consenting and nine thousand, it like <laughs> just like nine thousand something years is just a ridiculous thing, and you might as well just be forty because yeah. like I just can't compute. Yeah, that's just not. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, and like vampires need love too, um, <laughs> but, and that's. But I don't, <laughs> huh? I said that's where my stance is. I'm just like, eh, yeah, I don't generally like it, but on this show, but you know, yeah, but on this show, I, I don't like it because I don't like how the, there's a power dynamic sure. situation. Like I love. The doctor as professor and the doctor companion as professor and student, and that's why I liked River Song a lot yeah. because she wasn't really a companion, and they were able to put her on she like more of a professor. level. Yeah. yeah, and like so they were more on like a level playing field. Yeah, um, and she would like travel with them, but like she wasn't being introduced to the universe through this person mm-hmm. or by this person or whatever. I don't know how that syntax is actually supposed to go. Um, so. Just so you know, I'm excited because Yaz is queer and because I'm we're going to get lingering looks and the fan art's going to be top notch. <laughs> but next season when I'm complaining about uh, how I don't like <laughs> Yaz and the doctor flirting or whatever. Gotcha. And then when Yaz eventually leaves and there's a whole rose, this is the time I die. <laughs> I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> I'm going to hate it. Fair. I but am... for in this, in, in this moment, I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I am... Um was just like, I guess, about Rose and the Doctor. And then I was just like, ugh, no, when it was like the kept Martha? teasing. No, not oh. even. I'm skipping straight to Amy because like the Martha thing is the whole set of can of worms on its own. Yeah. Um, and then the Amy thing, I was just like, okay, are we really doing this again? And uh, part of that is because of the Martha being like, this is the third time now. Thought we'd had, you know, found something going with Donna here. <laughs> um and then Clara changed by the day. <laughs> oh, Clara didn't know who she was. Poor girl. <laughs> but I feel like, yeah, it's just, it would work for me. Um, but also, I'm sure they'll, the doctor never, unless it's River, like, is in a relationship with the companions on their own ha- behalf. So I think they also, it'll just be, like you said, lingering looks and angst. <laughs> And that'll be delicious. <laughs> it's like, but I can't do this with you. But you can. And all that jazz. So that would be yeah. fun. But I, I will I will be totally here for the doctor helping Yaz open up. And then Yaz finds some hot space alien girl. Bring back Bill. From the future. Bring back Bill. Who? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Good Lord, yes. Mm-hmm. That would break me in the most delicious level away. <laughs> it's like, sorry, me and my oil friend, we uh, had, we're on the outs right now. She just we sold our clubbing. house. The club closed. <sighs> the clubbing. My knees hurt. <laughs> my knees hurt. She just wanted to continue to club. And I was like, girl. It's like, you are I got an oil person. To to to- I am <laughs> human being and I'm aging. And I just need to settle yeah. down with someone who understands my I life. I want to get a dog. Yeah. I want to I want to adopt a puppy mm-hmm. and go for long walks. Yeah. And hold hands. Oh god. <laughs> Robin, are you talking about Bill and Yaz or you and the master? <laughs> Both hands. <laughs> 
Um, so, yeah, we're watching the space, as they kept telling us to, <laughs> um, <laughs> to see what happens next week with Yaz and her, um, her person. She has a person. That's all we yes. know so far. And I made a joke. And I was like, it's going to be real hilarious when it's Graham. And then people on Twitter oh were like, God. Connie, no. And I was I like, was listen. I was it was Ryan. I was like, I'm going to be so upset when it's Ryan. Which and is- that's why she didn't want to give him her sister's number. Right. Blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. Yeah. But it doesn't make I'm, sense. Like, no, the context, like, I, I feel like they could bait and switch us back to that. I feel like they could. But it would be even worse than it being like something completely different because one, Ryan isn't some en- enigmatic, like, you know. He really isn't. He is so straightforward. <laughs> and then even My in that episode. Chopsticks. Like, come on. He is. <laughs> even in that episode, they're on the stairs and <laughs> they're on the stairs and Ryan was just like, something, something's touching me. Something's touching me. <laughs> Yeah, it's just like, yeah, that's my like, elbow, you idiot. Me. <laughs> I'm touching you. <laughs> and I wasn't even trying to be slick about it. Like, my just my arm needed to go somewhere. It's like, there's no way she's talking about Ryan. I feel like Yaz would just be like, Ryan, I'm taking you out. No more caffeine. You know? Yeah. We're changing. It's like very much with them right now. It's like a very loving, but. They're siblings. Big. Yes, yeah, sibling relationship, mm-hmm. and so I don't. I think they. I wouldn't could. want that to happen, but I. I was like, they could do they it. They could do it, but it and would, I would be, be dumb. annoyed. It would, it would be, be so dumb. bad. It would be such a bad choice. So I'd honestly rather it be Graham. No. <laughs> I will also write. <laughs> no. At least they're doing something new. He's sad, you know. <laughs> She, he's been no. nagging her. They haven't spoken all season. They really haven't. They haven't spoken all that's season. Crazy. And that's why I was just like, it's going to be Graham. She's too awkward around Graham. Right. She, she can't talk to him. Warm. He's, you know, not talking to her. He's nagging her. So she's just she's like. so hot. Oh, Jack thinks so. Makes him nervous. Oh, my God. <laughs> I hate let's it. Let's move on to Ryan's and Raves. Yeah. Let's, yeah. There's nothing. Nothing better than Ryan playing chopsticks. There's nothing better. Can we just like talk about Tosin and Cole's comedic timing? It's and this perfect. is why I'm saying I'm not. I'm not happy if he leaves, but I'm not mad at it to see what his <laughs> other projects will be. You know what I mean? Right. But I still think like, dude, multitask. <laughs> <laughs> Give us a couple comedies a lot, here and there. A lot of people work multiple jobs, okay? Yeah. Lots of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm not... I, 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 he's so good. He's so funny. Like, physically... Without being... Reaction shots. He doesn't have to say anything. Right. And without it being, like, super slapstick or, like, no. so on the nose. Like, it's so realistic. Like, it's, yes. like, literally the dude... Like, I work with this dude who's a weirdo, like a lovable weirdo, where he just, like, says things, and you're like, what? And you can't help but, like, smile when you see him. To the point that when I started working there, everyone was like, "Uh uh-oh, be careful with this guy. He's a character. Like, (laughs) everyone everyone just knows. And, like, Ryan gives me that vibe. Like, if you worked in a shop with him... Oh, yeah. You would just find yourself, like, looking over to see where he is and what he's doing, because you know it's going to make you chuckle. Yeah. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like if he's it's like he's on shift, he's, it's like, oh, this is gonna be a good shift. Good shift. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He's stocking shelves and he's doing a little dance or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's like asking customers like the weirdest questions. Like it's such a realistic humor and like physicality. It's like chef kiss. It's yeah. Just, Cause I feel like some <laughs> We, are, we always talk about how much we hate Nardle, but the point of Nardle was like this ca- comic relief type character. Um, and But it was so overly done and like so like, look how funny this is. Like, look, he's being funny. And this next line, it's really funny. But like, Ryan doesn't need that. Like, it's just so subtle. 
um, while being laugh out loud hilarious. Like, I think I paused when he was playing chopsticks. So I was like, is that Ryan playing chopsticks? <laughs> and then they like showed his brown hands and I was just like, I can't. And I had to pause it and then come back to it. And he's like sitting there at the piano, <laughs> like trying it again. And she's just like, where is this song from? Yeah. It was so good. Like there, and there are a lot was, of moments like that this week. Like when he's about to pop off on Polidori, I was just mm-hmm. like, "Boy, God, seriously!" The whole, the whole like dual thing. Ten dual commandments. Had to get Ten dual commandments. But like when Polidori says dual, and then Ryan, or when he says like "Let's go," and then Ryan's like "Go," wait, you know what I mean? They're like dual. Ryan's face with the recognition of like, "Oh, bro, wants to shoot me." It's like. <laughs> So he goes to this, like, it's literally, like, a swaggy pee head tilt and, like, a what? And then, like, a, like, a, what? Like, who? Like, is this, like, confusion and then, like, offendedness? Like, like offendedness is out of Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's go with it. It's fine. Okay. Um, like, he's, like, he goes from confused to offended, like, like right, heartbeat, and then Polydor's like, on his face. and then Polydor's like, "This guy's gonna be your second And Graham was like, "No," and he's just like, "No, really?" Was like, and then he was like, "Damn, <laughs> you real useless." This is why I leave your ass. This is why I left you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so good. Also, Ryan gets to talk yeah. about Grace this week, and I was just like, "Wow, they really listening." Ep- eight yes. episodes late, <laughs> and like so in a way that is. <laughs> And, and, like, in a way that I think is, like, really great because natural, we, it's not, like, it's not, uh, I lost my gran and she had such great things to say. It's just really, like, a, oh, my gran always said this thing. Yeah. And, like, so I, it, yeah, just, like, in a way in which it's, like, okay, he's not, he's no longer actively grieving. Mm-hmm. But she was a huge part of his life, so there are moments that you're just going to think about your grandmother right. and, like, the things that she said to you or, right. you know, like, whatever, like... And you're going to mention her. and You know what I mean? Like, literally, this is the first time he's mentioned her since last season. Yeah. That's pretty crazy, considering Graham has mentioned it, like, three times. Yeah. <laughs> but also, always, Grandma, and this is the thing, Graham always mentions Grace in relation to how he's feeling. Mm-hmm. Like, Ryan just literally just was, like, thinking about her. Yeah. It was beautiful. Yeah. It was so great. And then um, really just Ryan being ready to sacrifice Shelly, because he's just like, listen... The options are out. The, what we what else we like, gonna do? I know math. <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Uh, I understand math. Yeah. Um, I love too that they gave it to Ryan because he is the youngest of them, right? Yeah, he's the youngest. I, mean, I guess one. he and Yaz are the same age. Really? Because she's a cop. But I mean, I get it. Okay. They were in class together. That's how they know each other. Okay, so they're the same age. Um, yeah, I guess because she's a trainee or whatever. Maybe there's no like secondary school situation so I maybe I don't think you have to go to college to be a cop which is an issue but whatever um, I mean I don't think you should have to go to college I don't know anyway but that's a different you could podcast just, you just cut that out uh, we'll just cut that out um, but yeah so I like that they give it to Ryan because of his use mm-hmm. um, like even though he has been traveling with the doctor and we see with Polidori like he has a better sense of like the doctor's kind of like lines in the sand type of thing and red lines and like still he's like okay but still the bath (laughs) and it wouldn't make sense coming from we don't pull you know and it yeah and it just wouldn't was Graham even there (laughs) I don't think Graham is even there I don't think Graham was there so really I don't know where Graham's still looking for a bathroom (laughs) but yeah it just like it was great because he also does it in such a way, like, because Ryan's such a sweetheart goofball, it's it's harsh, but it's not malicious. Right. Yeah. He's you know what I mean? literally like it's the not, math says that this is what we need to do to solve this problem. Yeah. It's, it's Ron Weasley in the book saying, do we kill them now? <laughs> Versus Ron Weasley in the movie being like, we got to kill these fools. <laughs> it's, a, it's a difference. Yeah, for sure. Um, okay, quotes from the TARDIS. Yeah. So, that was marvelous. Anyone up for, I don't know, spitball in here. How about writing the most gruesome spine chilling ghost story of all time? <laughs> no? We just want to, no. oh, you want to dance again? Not with Byron, no. but thank you. 
No, no, thank you. Yeah, I've been like, this bitch just broke her own rule. <laughs> you just said. She's like, well, we need to move things along, you know? You know? Sometimes Time is money. <laughs> money is pizza. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this enigmatic person of yours, would you trade them for reliable and dull? My person's different. She's talking about their team. Talking about the doctor. But also the answer is no. No. <laughs> she would not trade that. She is ready to be out here not reliable and exciting. When she Jumping said that Jumping into line, portals. Speaking of like good place stuff, when she said that line, I went, not a person, not a girl. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. The doctor is really a Janet. <laughs> Truly a Janet. And also just like, can I fall in love? I don't know. Let's try it. <laughs> Very much the do- doctor. Um, we'll see what we can do. Because um, sometimes the team structure isn't flat. It's mountainous. With me at the summit in the stratosphere alone. Left to choose. Save the poet. Save the universe. Watch people burn now or tomorrow. Sometimes even I can't win. Bars. And then like Lin-Manuel Miranda was like, I am not the <laughs> Bars. You know, she said, I think I paused it in the middle of the sentence. It is mountainous with me at the summit. I paused it because I was like, oh. and then the chorus, whoa, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> also, save the poet. I save literally the universe is from Heroes. Just save the cheerleader, uh, save the world. Wait, what? They stole that from Heroes. Save the poet, save the universe is just save the cheerleader, save the world. Save the world. From <laughs> heroes. Oh my God. <laughs> Why did you do that to me, Compton? <laughs> that's what Ow. it was. That's what it I was. Need, I didn't need that connection that's, at all. That's what it was. Um, Go ahead. You were saying something. When there's a doctor monologue like that, I'm always like, for your consideration. <laughs> BAFTA, take a note. Yeah, that was my, this is being submitted. Mm-hmm. This clip, this episode, like, here you it. go. There were a few of those with Capaldi. Right. And I was like, he can only win so many BAFTAs, guys. Like, <laughs> but sometimes it's chill. one of those where it's just like they wrote this so that they could be considered for awards. I get it. And then sometimes <laughs> you're just like, no, this is perfect. Like that line yeah. was perfect because it is a culmination. And again, I wish they'd done more with like the tension between her and the fam so that when it does come to this moment, it's like... It's a big deal and a shock, but it's sort of like they did something with it before it because it's just like, no, every, I think even a couple episodes ago, she referenced it again, like this team structure is very flat, Um, but it's just like, they've had this running thing this whole time and she's just like, no, it is mountain, mountainous is just a really good word, especially in that, like, in the way, in that context and then the way she said it, Jody's accent, Jody. Jody is just doing the thing, acting. Actor. Um, anyway. Bars. Bars. That was step one. What's step two? Fix the mess I created in step one. Welcome to Doctor Who. Right? It was, it was like, I got a plan moment. Yes, but it like. Was, it was an I got a plan line. Oh, and there is where you're, one, isn't there? there there's a, there is a plan line, I think, too. Yeah. But like. Um. But this one was, it stood out more to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was very much like, and if you wanted to know what the show was about, here <laughs> In one line. Yeah. <laughs> I just got to fix the mess that I just created. Yep, that's it. Um, but yeah, I do, and I like that it is like the opposite of a plan line, where it's just like, well, that plan d- didn't go very well. <laughs> Time to come up mm-hmm. with a new plan. Right. Graham, I think I'm seeing dead people. Because, like, you know, he all right, was like, sense. yeah, he was there. He I'm just, movie. is Graham okay? <laughs> is <he a> <laughs> Can someone go check on him? They're going to forget him. He's going to be like, I was at home this whole time. And they're like, oh. He's going to forget them. They're going to have to start writing notes. Oh, on no. Them. Like, I'm just. <laughs> Too much he looks so travel. lost. He was so lost. He was in a different episode altogether. <laughs> they were dealing with Frankenstein, and he was like, "I don't know what he, I don't know what he was doing. I don't know where he was." <laughs> he doesn't either. <laughs> he saw some lady. He and didn't child. know either. It was. Oh my goodness. <clears throat> we are inevitable. 
which, you know, <laughs> uh, Ashad also saw Avengers Endgame. <laughs> it was just like, I gotta, gotta go back to 1816, but first... Let me just pop into this theater real quick in 2019. Like, listen, I, I too am a fan I've, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. I committed 10 years yes. to the MCU. Just because I got upgraded right before Endgame came out didn't mean I wasn't going to finish that. Right, you know. You know. We had things to um, do. Cybermen like movies too. <sighs> <laughs> And they get them direct. They don't even go into the theater because they got that, like... The Cy- Siberian. No, I was thinking about, like, the jailbroken. Like, <laughs> a jailbroken Cyberman. He is jailbroken. That's exactly what it is. <laughs> uh, they got that bootleg. Yeah, but it's, it's like an HD... theaters, but I but got it's it. it's HD quality. Co- like, it's HD quality, though. So... Yeah. He saw every the 4K quality. moment of that. Mm-hmm. That's where he got the lightning idea from um, Cap mm-hmm. and the Hammer. Yep. Boom. We solved it. <clears throat> All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. Check us out at blackgirlscreate.org. Follow us on Twitter at WeBlackAndNerds, at Robin underscore Ravenclaw, and at Constar24. Use the hashtag Harvest. Let us know your thoughts about um, this episode. And Yasmin, or Yasteen, or Thasmin. Thasmin. Mm -hmm. I said that wrong. Thasmin, Yasteen. Yasteen works, but Thasmin just really, like, hits. I disagree, but okay. Um, But let us know your thoughts anyway. Um, share gifts of Ryan with us. Mm, yes. And where do you think the master is? What is he doing right now? More importantly, what is he wearing right now? Mm. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> Rate and review us to ridiculous people on iTunes <laughs> and where your podcasts are found. If you can review there, you can also become a Patronus. Uh, we have Patronus chirp, Patronus perks, not chirps, Patronus <laughs> perks uh for all sorts of things but uh if you donate 25 dollars per month or more you get tarvis bonus episodes where we'll recap classic who not this month because it's black wizard history month but you know at some point uh, yeah what is time <laughs> what is time also Wibbly don't forget wobbly. to get don't forget we have tarvis t-shirt um you can get our time relative blackness in space shirt over at dftda also shout out to caitlin yeah. Who was rocking the Tarvis tea at Galley One. Yeah. Fly. And I'm also, again, Caitlin, Ty, everyone in our community that was at Galley, just, you didn't have to do me like that. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm already But there. go go buy our shirt. <laughs> yeah. Our and shirt is Because apparently as someone well. else was wearing it at Galley. And if that was you and you listened to us, please send us a picture. Because Caitlin, hey said, Caitlin said that they couldn't get the picture. So, like, please show us. Thanks. We love when we and see also, one hey, of our How you doing? Um, okay, Joey. Tarvis is a part of Hard Knock Media. We've joined the Nerds of Color Podcast Network, including the podcast Hard Knock Life, Southern Fried Asians, DC TV Classics, Ask Spy Girls, Daisy Geek Girls. We're not all ninjas and that moment. You can check out all of these podcasts at hardknockmedia.com. That's hard n o c media.com. Once again, thank you for listening. We'll be back. We'll be back next week for <laughs> Doctor Who episode twelve oh nine, Ascension of the Cybermen, which is the part part which is part one of the two part finale. Uh, let's hope it's that we get one of Master. Yeah, like let's, ho- let's hope we get Master. We have Ruth. to get Ra- Master, Ruth, and Jack. Like, how do they not have room for all of this? And, I'm concerned. And Thasman. And Thasman and Gallifrey. Like, we got to figure out something with Gallifrey. Dude, it's too much. There's a lot so going much. on. So much is happening. That's why it's a two-part and finale, but... we got to get all of that, plus the 14 other characters that go into this. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly. So a lot. It's get a your, lot. Get your brains working, um, and we'll see you then. Bye. The black girls have the box.